Saudi Arabia, in the meantime, getting closer every day to a landmark deal normalizing diplomatic relations with Israel. Now, those are the words of Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. He spoke to Fox News. For us, the Palestinian issue is very important. We need to solve that part. And we have a good negotiation to continue. Till now, we got to see where it will go. We hope that it will reach a place that it will uh, ease the life of the Palestinians and uh, get Israel back, uh, uh, as a player in the middle, uh, middle East. Every day we get closer. It seems it's for the first time a uh, real one, serious. We got to see how it goes. Bloomberg Daybreak Middle East and Africa anchor Yusuf Gamal El Dean joining us now. Yusuf, your take on MBS's interview. So there are historic uh, shifts in the geopolitical calculus in the region, and this interview is time to leverage that major shift. It's very, very significant. It's the first time we've seen him speak English in public in a very, very long time. He doesn't give a lot of interviews. It took place at a gorgeous location along the Red Sea, close to the city of Neom. I mean, you have to see the pictures to understand what Neom is meant to be. It's meant to be a futuristic city unlike anything that's ever been seen before. And it speaks to the ambitions that Saudi Arabia has. It's also along the halfway mark of Vision 2030, seven years into it, as they try and diversify away from oil and prove the world wrong. This is not a diversification project. This is a transformation project. The Saudis have shown that they're willing to work on these sensitive issues. The complex negotiations on the way with the U.S., and Israel would see Washington offer security guarantees to Riyadh, the Saudis would normalize relations with Israel, and then Israel would try and take actions to preserve the possibility of a Palestinian state. He also spoke about Iran and the possibility of them getting a nuclear weapon. He said, you know, if they get one, we get one as well. With that being said, diplomatic ties are coming back into play. They've restored uh, ambassadors. And the focus for Saudi Arabia now is really to allow the kingdom to be a player beyond crude oil. And as a result, that means Saudi first in a lot of the domestic and international thinking. And that means U.S. foreign policy is not always front and center in terms of the decisions they make. A really interesting take on, on that, simply because you talk about diplomacy. When I think MBS and Fox News, I immediately think about how close perhaps he was with the former president of Donald Trump, especially when it came to the oil of it all. He talked about that. What did he say? I mean, look, he underscored that this is not about uh, helping Russia out, right? So even though Russia and Saudi Arabia see eye to eye within OPEC, plus he made the point that the Saudis voted uh, against Russia when it came to the United Nations motion on the Ukraine war. At the end of the day, his take was it's all about supply and demand, echoing what uh, his uh, family relative, uh, the Saudi energy minister, keeps saying uh, every couple of weeks as well, that they're looking at the data and making decisions on that basis. The extension of the Saudi cuts to the year end of a million barrels per day is going to raise a few flags of concern in a market that's already restricted. Goldman Sachs talking about $100 a barrel by year end, that ups their forecast from $93 a barrel. But a diplomatic answer from the Saudi crown prince, and we're all kind of left thinking about whether there are any bigger geopolitical strokes that are being played behind the scenes to make the most of this oil power uh, in the soft equation out there.